Hello friends, this video on probability part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 11. Now we will understand new topic called multiplication theorem on probability. And this is for two elements, E and F it's suppose here. And this is nothing but something which is derived from the earlier formula. Earlier I had this formula, right, this I know is nothing but E intersection F by P of E. The same thing you put this side, what you get is probability of E intersection F is probability of E into probability of F. This is what you get. Similarly, if you see, if I have this formula, probability of E given F is nothing but probability of E intersection F by probability of F or you get if you see probability of E intersection F is nothing but probability of F into probability of E given F. So if you see this is what you get. And that's the formula. So if you want to find the intersection of the probability of intersection of E and F, if you know the probability, conditional probability of F given E condition and you know the probability of E, you can just multiply them and get the answer. Or if you know the probability of E given F and also in the probability of F, you can multiply these two and get the answer, right? That's the formula we have. You can use this formula. So I have an urn that contains uh, 10 red 5 green balls. So it has 10 red and 5 green balls. Two balls are drawn from this urn, one after another, without replacement. So I'll take out one and then I'll take out the both balls without replacement. What is the probability that both the balls, brown balls are the red? So if you see here, if I have my set, let's suppose F, which means first is red, F is for first red, and let's suppose S is for second red. I have two sets. So here I have to find the probability of F intersection S. Now you see, finding the probability of F is simple. Finding the probability of getting first red is simple. And uh, we know that the formula we are going to apply is probability of F intersection S is nothing but probability of F dot probability of S given F. This is the formula we have. So the probability of getting first red is very simple. We know how because they are how many uh, 10 rates total number of balls are 15. So probability of getting red is 10 by 50. First red. Probability of getting second red given the first is red is how much? That is something we know how to find. Correct? So that if you see will be since it was without replacement first ball is red given then we are left with only 9 red balls right 9 red and 5 green total number of balls we are left with 14 balls I am to find probability of getting a second red that is 9 by 14 why because you took out one red ball you are left with only 14 balls and then you are to take out the next ball and you want that next ball has to be red so it has the probability 9 by 4 and that is nothing but 3 by 7 and that is my answer very simple just I applied the formula to get the probability and this is nothing but multiplication theorem on probability we'll take my example where we'll have three elements instead of two elements so here we have only two elements f and s we'll take examples where we have more than two elements 
So for this formula is pretty simple. So if you want to multiply these probabilities, probability of E intersection F intersection G is nothing but probability of E into probability of F given E into probability of G given E. It is like this probability of E into probability of F given E because you only covered this then probability of G given F and E. Very simple. Let me do it once again. This guy is nothing but probability of E into probability of F given E because you already covered E so probability of F given E into probability of G given E and F. That's why it is probability of E into probability of F given E into probability of G given E, E F. It's not that complex, just understand this. Probability of E intersection F intersection G is nothing but probability of E into probability of F given E into probability of G given both E and F. Correct? Very simple. Let's take one example on this, the same formula. Three cards are drawn successively without replacement from a pack of 52 wheel shuffle cards. What is the probability that the first two cards are king and third card is an ace? So we have this structure here. So from this three, if you see the card structure, we have uh, 13 diamond, 13 heart, 13 club, 13 spade, and uh, we have this J, K, Q are called faces, and uh, we have this numbers like this, right? So from this, we take out three cards. C1, C2, and C3. We have to find the probability that the first two cards are king. That is, we have to find the probability of first card is king, second card is king, and the third card is ace. First is king, second is king, and third is ace. So this guy is nothing but if you see is probability of king into probability of king 2 given the first one is king 1 into probability of ace 3 given the first two cards are king 1 and king 2. Very simple. Now probability of king 1 is how much? The first card I am taking out and this card I have 4 kings, right? 4 kings I have? 4 kings. Total card is how much? 52, right? So probability of king 1 will be 4 by 52. One card is gone from this. Now I am left with 3 king and 51 cards. Correct? So next is probability of king 2 given king 1. I have already told that the first guy was king 1. So probability of king 2 will be 3 by 51. Why? Because this is probability of king 2 given king 1 into so now I am left with 2 king and 50 cards. And how many ace I have? I have still have 4 ace. Because I didn't touch the ace. Now I have to find the probability of given the card is ace. Already told that we have taken out 2 cards and both are king cards. That means I have how many ace left? 4 left. Total card is 50. This is my value. You solve you get 2 by 5, 5, 2. Very simple. I hope you understand this. Probability of first card king, second card king, and third card third card ace is probability of first card king into probability of second card king given first card is king into probability of third card is given the first two card is king. Probability of first card king is very simple 4 by 52 because they are 4 king and total cards are 52. Probability of second card king given the first card is king is 3 by 51 because from this I took out one king so I am left with 3 king and 51 cards. So it is 3 by 51. Now I have to find the probability of getting an ace given the first two cards I took was king. That means I am left with 50 cards out of which we have 2 king and 4 ace. Right? And other cards also but ace are only 4 so it becomes 4 by 50. Let's take one more example on the multiplication theorem of probability. Two cards are drawn at random without replacement from the pack of 52 playing cards, find the probability that both the cards are black. That means I have to find the probability of first card black, second card black. Correct? This guy is nothing but probability of first card black into probability of 
second card blank given the first card how many black cards 26 black cards right total card 52 so probability of black card will be 26 by 52 correct first case second case i told that one card i took and that is black so i'm left with 25 black card and 51 total card so second also i want to find the probability of getting a black so out of 20, uh, 51 i have 25 black card so this probability will be 25 by 51 right because 25 possible options of getting a black card out of total 51 card so this is my answer so all this, this is nothing but 20 5 by 1 0 very simple just the application of multiplication theorem of probability probability of b1 and b2 is nothing but probability of b1 multiply by probability of b2 given and this is the chain multiplication you can do it for n number of elements let's take one more example so here a box of orange is inspected by examining three orange randoms without replacement. Please note for all these words without replacement. Three orange you are taking. If all three orange are good, the box is approved for sale, otherwise rejected. Find the probability that the box containing 15 oranges out of which 12 are good, 13 are bad, are approved for sale. So I have a box which has three bad, uh, three bad, I'll say 12 good and three bad orange. And it is approved only when I tick out three, three oranges and all are good. That is, you get first good, second good and third. So when this condition is true, then only my oranges are approved for sale. This guy is nothing but probability of good one into probability of getting second good given the first is good probability of getting third good right given first two are good correct so probability of getting good is how much how many oranges 15 total how many goods 12 so out of from if you pick any of the 12 orange from 15 you get the probability of getting good now from this one guy is gone so i'm left with 11 good and 3 bad correct because one is gone so in this case the probability of getting second good is 11 by 14 why because 11 good and 3 bad from this again one guy is gone so i'm left with 10 good and 3 bad so probability of getting third good also will be 10 good by total number of orange oils 30 and this, if you saw, it's nothing but 44. And that is my answer. Very simple. I have this box. From this, I will take out three oranges. If all three are good, I say that my box is approved. So the probability of approved for sale is 44 by 19. If you see, there are only three bad ones, but almost 50% of them are getting rejected. And thus, what the quality check is, if you see only three are bad, but still 50% of them are getting rejected because of the quality. Correct? Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.